Hi everyone, this is Philip Shields. When I was a child growing up in the Philippines, my father was a missionary there, and every Sunday we would go to his church services, and then I'd come back home, and my mom would ask me, well, what did you learn today? And so I would tell her, and then she, who was not a Sunday keeper at the time, but a Sabbath keeper, Seventh-day Sabbath keeper, would talk to me about what the Bible really said as she understood it. And then, so I was convinced that the Sabbath was to be the seventh day of the week, not just any old day, not Sunday. And so, come Saturdays, six, after the sixth day on the seventh day, on the seventh day, I would disappear because if I hung around, my dad would have chores for me to do and jobs. And he thought I was just being lazy, but in fact, what I was trying to do was get back into the jungles behind our house. There was a precipice behind our house get back into the jungles and disappear for a day. My dad knew I loved to do that anyway. And, uh, but I'd take along some reading, a Bible and some magazine articles or whatever. I'm talking as a 10, 11, 12 year old boy. And so I attended his Sunday church and then tried to keep Sabbath as well. Later on, my parents were divorced. We came back to, to America and then we started attending church services wherever we were assigned initially into Long Beach and then uh, Los Angeles and as we moved around and finally Pasadena, California. And we were not well off. So my brother and I and my two sisters and my mom, so it's that five of us in the house uh, trying to get ready for Sabbath services. Can you imagine being ready and getting, telling your sister, hollering at your sister, hurry up, it's my turn to take a bath or shower and trying to, you know, when I'd get into the shower, I'd have to clear away their nylons that were hanging over <laughs> to uh, three women and my brother and I. So anyway, uh, somehow we got it all done, went to services, met everybody there, a couple hours of services and then, and then fellowshipping afterwards, come back home and so on. I, I learned to love the Sabbath, actually. Uh, a lot of kids didn't, but I, I did. I, I, I loved it, enjoyed it. And... Um, now, I want to talk about that because I feel, I just, as I look around, that even those who keep the Seventh-day Sabbath, many of you listening to this keep the Seventh-day Sabbath. Many of you don't who listen to this. But those of you who do, I think we could use a refresher on it. So I'm going to give a two-part series or sermons. The first part is how important the Sabbath is, what exactly Scripture says about it, Part two will be applying that into our daily life, into our Sabbath life, Sabbath day life. So welcome to Light on the Rock. I'm glad you came. And uh, please be sure you visit and check out the blogs. If you want to read all the blogs or see what all the blog titles are, go to the top of the page. Maybe we can show that now. Go to the top of the page where it says uh, video and sermons, meaning the audio sermons, and then blogs. Click on blogs and you'll see how it can just, it'll, give you every single blog we, we, we've ever printed up there. So make sure you do that and um, learn, learn how to use it. Learn how to use the search bar. Uh, I've given sermons before on the Sabbath and why and how it got changed to Sunday, who did it, what does the Bible say about that. Uh, just type in the word Sabbath in the search bar and the sermons about Sabbath will pop up. That's all. And so please learn to use the search bar there, we have literally hundreds and hundreds of sermons already on the website. End time believers are described in God's word, not very favorably. Jesus asked the question, will I find faith on the earth when I return? Revelation 3, after talking about the Philadelphia church, the seventh church, where Christ is depicted as knocking on their door. He says to them, open the door. What is Yeshua, what is Jesus doing outside his own house, outside his own church? And they're described as lukewarm. They're the Laodicean group. And lukewarm. He wants to spit them out. But he says, if you repent, then you'll sit with me on my throne. So it's very, very important <clears throat> that we understand how important the Sabbath is. That it was because of idolatry, witchcraft, and Sabbath-keeping, breaking 
Sabbath breaking, why God sent Israel and Judah into captivity. Nehemiah 13 verses 15 to 22 tells us Nehemiah is watching them break the Sabbath and he's very angry at them. And he says to them in Nehemiah 13 verses 15 to 22, isn't this why we were sent into captivity and now you're doing the same old things again? Stop breaking the Sabbath. So as it began to get dark before the Sabbath, just before the Sabbath, he closed the city gates and made sure that nobody was buying and selling on the Sabbath. Go back and read that. Numbers 13, verses 15 to 22. And also even the land Sabbaths. Uh, the Bible is very clear in uh, 2 Chronicles 36. I think it's the last chapter of 2 Chronicles describing what God was doing as he sent people into captivity is he was allowing the land he'd given them to have their rest, to have their land Sabbaths. And so go back and read those. 2 Chronicles 36, verses 20, 21, and Nehemiah 13. <clears throat> now let's read God's commandment. I want you all, those of you who keep the seventh day Sabbath and those of you who do not, listen carefully, read it on the screen carefully. And uh, by the way, before we read that, who was the first person you think to keep the Sabbath? I promise you it wasn't a Jew. It wasn't an Israelite. <laughs> Anyway, we'll see as we go along. But Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Remember, some translations say, to, uh, the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor, do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Jehovah, the Lord your God. It's not the Jew's Sabbath. It's not the Israel, Israel, Israel Sabbath. It's the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Let that sink in. In it you shall do no work. We'll define that somewhat today and much more in part two as well. Neither you nor your son nor your daughter, anyone living in your house that you're responsible for must not be working on the Sabbath nor your male servant, can I say your male employee, or this may also be some of the bond servants or the slaves, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who within, who's visiting in your cities and within your gates. He says, I want everyone to stop working on the Sabbath. We'll define all the words as we go along. For in six days, the Lord, Jehovah, made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that's in them, and rested on the seventh day. Did not rest in one in seven, nor, uh, nor is that what we're commanded here. Therefore, Jehovah blessed any day you want to be the Sabbath. It's not what it says. <laughs> Jehovah blessed the Sabbath day, which he's already defined here as the seventh day. In verse 9, six days you shall... Labor, do all your work, but the seventh day, not one in seven. Those of you who are preaching that it could be one in seven, stop it. Stop it. By the word of God, stop it. That's not what the scripture says. It's not a general principle of once in a while having some rest. That's better than having none, I guess. But you can't call that Sabbath keeping. Many of you are out there preaching, one in seven's fine, so I keep Sunday. Some keep Friday. Some, you know, the Muslims keep Friday. It's not Friday, and it's not Sunday, the day of the sun, as Constantine called it. Therefore, Jehovah blessed the Sabbath day. That's the day he blessed. He didn't bless the next day Sunday. He didn't bless Friday. Therefore, Jehovah blessed the Sabbath day, which he defined here as the seventh day in verse 9 and hallowed it. So the Sabbath day of God is to be a day that we stop when it makes, and we make it a very different day from all the others. We do no work. We don't require any work of our employees. It's not like we can stay home and keep Sabbath and keep our business open by having employees run it. No, no, no. Neither you nor your male servant nor your female servant. It's not like we can be a farmer and quit working, but we can have our oxen and cows and ass 
asses and donkeys all doing some kind of work. No. He says, everyone is to have a rest day. We're to convey the love of God, love for God and of God, and love for one another on this day. God created his Sabbath by remembering his creation. It mentions that here in the fourth commandment. Uh, Catholics call this the third command because they want to minimize the one about idolatry. But anyway, he's the creator. Uh, not some big bang of any, or any form of evolution. God did, when God says, there was, let there be light, and there was a big bang, that's not what it says. God says there was light, and there was light. The Bible's very clear in John 8, 12, and John 9, 4, uh, 5. John 8, 12, and John 9, verse 5. I, Yeshua speaking, I am the light of the world. I say Yeshua, by the way, because many of you prefer the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew term. I say Jesus as well, for those of you who don't like the Hebrew term. So Jesus, Yeshua, same person, okay? To me, you couldn't possibly get an orderly, beautiful uh, cosmos and galaxies and nebula all in their order, working beautifully together. You know, like if the earth was too much closer to the sun, we couldn't survive. And so uh, things are very, very well set out. You don't get well set out with a big explosion. And where did the material for that little sand size piece of material come from that made the big explosion? Who caused it to explode? Anyway, you all might believe in the Big Bang. I don't see how you get order, have a Big Bang, and then somehow give it enough time, a beautiful watch and all its precision parts work beautifully. Creation works beautifully. The, the shopping mall comes to, comes to being with the food court and everything else. It doesn't work that way with a big explosion. Anyway, that's the way I see it. God created things. He was the light. Let there be light, and God appeared, boom, and there was light. It was also given as a sign. The Sabbath, along with circumcision for the Old Testament chosen people, was a sign. Exodus 31, we'll put it up. Um, Jehovah spoke to Moses and said, Speak also to the children of Israel and say, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep. It's a sign between me and you. He goes on in the next few verses. But why it's a sign? And it's showing that you are my sanctified holy people. So the weekly Sabbath, along with circumcision in the Old Testament, were the signs of God's people, identifying them as who they were. In the New Covenant, for those of us today, uh, one of the signs was that you love one another. John 13, verses 34, I mean, um, John 13, 30, yeah, 34 and 35. And then also, I believe, the Sabbath is still a sign as well. It's who identifies us. It's what identifies us as God's people. In the previous Sabbath sermons, I explained how it got changed to Sunday, who did it, and showing the verses and scriptures, which day really is the Sabbath, and what did they do in the New Testament. Uh, just type, just show, we'll show on the uh, search bar, just type in Sabbath, and these sermons will pop up. Now, this is part one, and I want to lay the scriptural foundation of what, how important, how vital this Sabbath is. I'm not going to base what I teach you from what the Jews do, the Orthodox Jews. The people who are Reformed Jews and liberal Jews, they don't keep the Sabbath hardly at all. Uh, anyways, but the Orthodox Judaism is not what I'm going to follow. The Orthodox Jews, in my way of looking at it, are descendants of the Pharisees. I believe that's true. And um, so I don't follow the traditions of the Jews. Many of you do, of who are Messianic Jews or Hebrew roots type people. I don't. Jesus ridiculed, condemned, put down the traditions that the Jews had added to God's law. You have made God's law of none effect by your traditions, he even said. So we don't light the two candles to begin Sabbath. We don't have that glass of wine that we pray a Jewish prayer in Hebrew over. We don't. I see none of that in Scripture. And we don't go out and either bake or buy challah bread, uh, the Jewish bread that they have at beginning the Sabbath, just before it begins, I think like a half hour before it begins. Sabbath begins at sundown. They do this stuff welcoming the Sabbath before sundown, and they keep it for 25 hours, be more righteous than God, I guess. None of that is in Scripture. None of that is in Scripture. So I will not look at what the Jews do in their 39 words that define 
work, everything from tying a knot to threshing or harvesting or, or uh, winnowing. Uh, they have 39 definitions of them, really you know, things you can't do, which turn the Sabbath into a burden, in, certainly even by Jesus' day. Nor will I take my cues from those who teach that Sunday is the Sabbath or Christ is our Sabbath. That's, to me, just so blatantly in God's face. So those who do that, you can't say you keep all ten commandments because this fourth commandment said very clearly the Sabbath is the seventh day, what we would call Saturday. I hate these pagan names, you know, Saturn's Day and Sunday and, and Friga's Day Friday and so on, Moon Day, anyway. So, so we're not, we don't, we're not going to take the cues from people who say one day, any day is fine. Well, that's so blatantly in God's face. In part two, I'll go into the principles of what God says to do on the Sabbath and what we can do and how liberating it is, how wonderful it is, how joyful it is. Not all of you will agree with me. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to lay down a bunch of do's and don'ts and legalism about the Sabbath. I will share with you what we do and, and uh, go by scripture or anything beyond that, you decide. My first question, a trick question perhaps, <laughs> where is the word Sabbath first mentioned in the Bible? What's your answer? It's kind of a trick question. What is it? The Sabbath day was created on the seventh day of creation by God, but the word Sabbath is not actually mentioned in Genesis 2. We'll read it in a few minutes here. The first mention of the word Shabbat in Hebrew, or Sabbath, is Exodus 16. So let's read it. Exodus 16, verses 22 to 24. And so it was on the sixth day, this is about the time that God was going to start giving them manna now, and he wanted to tell them, I don't want you out there earning your bread I don't want you out there picking up food and working it all on the Sabbath. And yet before, if they kept it overnight, it bred worms pretty fast. But here, Exodus 16, he says, collect double on the sixth day and there will be no worms. You'll have enough for Sabbath as well and won't have to go out there and pick it. Exodus 16, verses 22 to 24 so it was on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, and then he said to them, this is what Jehovah has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord, a holy Sabbath to Jehovah. Bake what you will bake today, boil what you will boil, and lay up for yourself all that remains to be kept until morning. This is a very interesting verse, too, because there are two words here used. A Sabbath rest. Sabbath is Shabbat. And the word Shabbat literally means, in Hebrew, stop, cease, stop. Just stop. I find it amazing that we have to be told and given a commandment by God to stop, to rest. <laughs> we want to all keep going all the time. It's hard just to stop. Anyway, but then it goes on, a Sabbath rest. That word is sabaton, and, uh, or sabaton. This, this noun is used for very special kinds of rest. It's used for the day of, of the weekly Sabbath. It's used for the day of atonement. It's used for the day of trumpets. And for the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. These are all holy days, annual holy days. And the eighth day after the feast. So it's also the word used, of course, for the sabbatical, sabbatical land rest. Every seven years, you're supposed to let your land rest. Don't harvest from it, don't plant it, and so forth. And now, this was in the time when, when uh, it was to be a nation under God. But that's what we're told. The, the, the sabbaton is also related to the land rest. So he's saying, tomorrow is Shabbat sabbaton. A holy Sabbath, a holy Sabbath to Yehovah. And so this sounds like the way it's being introduced here, like this was before Exodus 20. This is Exodus 16. The voicing of the command is Exodus 20. 
The Sabbath is brought up in Exodus 16 as a commandment, at least it seems to me, already known. As slaves in Egypt, they certainly had not experienced the Sabbath. They wished they could have had a day off. God mentions that in Deuteronomy 5, the parallel re retelling, the re-explaining even of the Ten Commandments by Moses. And of course, God gave it at creation. And this was be and, and, and this Exodus 16 comes before Exodus 20. And, and, and Exodus 20 says, remember. You can't remember something that hasn't happened before. You can't remember something you haven't been involved with before. So certainly by Exodus 20, for sure, they've been involved with it with a gathering of the manna. And I believe that Adam and Eve were taught the Sabbath. I believe that, you know, we find Joseph saying that if I commit adultery here with my master's wife, it will, it, that would be a great sin, he says. So they were aware of sin. They were aware of sin and what it was. The commandments define sin. Sin is the breaking of God's law, 1 John 3, 4. So I believe Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were aware of the Sabbath, and as they worked with God, God worked with them. I believe they kept it, though the scriptures don't say that. Um, if the Bible says they kept his law. The Bible says they were righteous. So it makes sense to me that they did. Now, are you zealously keeping the Sabbath? We're end time later seeing, maybe. Remember, Christ says he's here. But I began to, as I thought about the Sabbath, felt like I needed a tune-up. Like I needed a tune-up. So I began to work on this sermon. I think we're pretty good at remembering the Sabbath. We're not caught off guard. We know it's coming up. We keep the Sabbath. I'm not so sure we know we're as good at keeping it holy. We'll talk a lot about that today and next one. Do you also realize that the Sabbath in Leviticus 23 is one of the listed moed, the, that's the Hebrew word for divine appointment, divine appointment. So I like to think of the Sabbath. And I think if you think of the Sabbath this way, it will help you be prepared and keep it in the right joyful, right attitude. Think of the Sabbath as a date with your coming husband, who's coming soon, I hope. Think of Sabbath as a date. All right. Also think of Sabbath as a, um, now again, think of it as a date with your future husband. Isn't that great? I think it's great. It's a divine appointment. Now also in Exodus 16, where we've been reading lately, but in verse 29, it says, See, Jehovah has given you, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. He is saying, like it or not, or whether you realize it or not, the Sabbath is a gift I'm giving you. Do you think of the Sabbath as gift from God? Now, the next time Sabbath is mentioned, Exodus 16 with the manna, the next time is Exodus 20 in the voicing of the fourth commandment. Again, Sabbath means to cease, to stop. The focus in Exodus 16 was to stop and rest. The word sabbaton, a Sabbath rest. It's to stop and rest. Make sure that you have plenty of time to rest on the Sabbath. Sometimes I have pastors in, in Africa or other places who work with me, and I ask them what they do on the Sabbath, and they go, well, you know, it, it, they, they're pretty busy. I think one man even got up for an early radio service uh, sa Sabbath morning, and then the church began, maybe at 10 or whatever it was, and uh, they would go on for two, two and a half hours or whatever, and then they'd have a little break, and they had prayer meeting, then another service, several that I've worked with, not just one I'm talking about here, several I've worked with, that's been the case, and I'm saying to them, when do you rest? Or do the people come home dead tired from Sabbath services? When do you rest? The whole point of Sabbath, the biggest point is to stop and rest. That's the biggest point. The biggest point is not to worship God on that Sabbath, though we are to, but what makes the Sabbath unique? We worship God every day. On Sabbath, we stop and rest. And then we come together to worship God. Yes, but the focus, the main focus is to stop and rest. Spend time with your family. 
Make it a joyful, wonderful day that the kids grow up and will continue looking forward to the Sabbath. Is your Sabbath a day of rest? Feeling rested. That's the primary focus, okay? Uh, the primary focus of all the scriptures. So guess what? Even God ceased from his work. Not because he was rested, but to set the example. And he declared this day separate and holy. Let's go back now and read it in Genesis 2. This is the first time the Sabbath, though the word's not used, this is when it was introduced. Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3. Thus the heavens, and I want you to notice the word seventh, by the way, in Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3, I think three times. Three times God's word says seventh, not just any day you pick. Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3, I'm reading from the NIV. Usually I read from the New King James. If I don't have a reference, it's the New King James. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from his work that he had done. And so God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. God did not make Friday holy. God did not make Sunday holy. He blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God, Elohim, rested from all his work that he had done in creation. The complete Jewish Bible says God blessed the seventh day and separated it as holy. One of the meanings of holy is to be, is to separate something out for special use to God, holy use to God. And also remember that Genesis 1 makes it very clear that the days were sundown to sundown. And Nehemiah 13, verse 19, you might want to, let's put this up. Nehemiah 13, verse 19, just this phrase, as it began to be dark before the Sabbath. And also the seventh day, I want to point out these idea, the idea that some of you keep, there are people I know who are keeping the, the lunar Sabbath, and it takes you off pace of the seven-day week sometimes. No, it's a seven-day week. The seventh day is holy. And Nehemiah 13, 19 makes clear that just as it was starting to get dark is when the Sabbath would begin, just before the Sabbath. Many other verses do as well. So don't play games with God. It's not any old day. If you've been hearing that, I've just read to you what God's Word says here, Exodus 16, Exodus 20. It's the seventh day. That's the day he set apart to be holy, for us to rest. It's his gift to us. Okay? I hope and pray you're hearing this. Now, the one who created the Sabbath... Remember Ephesians 3, 9, Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 3. I've had many sermons on this before. The one who created everything is God the Father through Jesus Christ. It's always been God the Father most high, always has been that way. And the one we now know is Jesus, the Word of God, working in tandem with the Father so that he could honestly say, um, Every word I speak is what the Father wanted. Everything I did is what the Father wanted. And that's always been the way it was. So yes, the one who created and molded Adam out of the mud or a dust of the earth, out of dirt, Adam, from the word Adama, the ground, the dirt. Anyway, my point is, the one who created Adam, the one who created all things, the one who spoke with Adam and Eve, the one who walked with them, that was the one who became Jesus Christ. So no wonder he's able to say to them that he was Lord of the Sabbath. He's the one who made the Sabbath, the one we now know as Jesus. And also realize that when he made the Sabbath and gave it to Adam and Eve, showed Adam and Eve what he was doing, we all, this is very important, all had descended from Adam and Eve. So it was made for mankind, all mankind. 
not just Jews or Israelites, house of Judah, house of Israel is what I'm saying here. Okay, we all descend from Adam and Eve. So it was given and shown for all of us. Mark 2, 27 and 28. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man, Jesus, is also Lord of the Sabbath. He's just right on the cusp of saying, Hey, I made the Sabbath. I know what I intended for the Sabbath to be like and not be like. So Sabbath was made for us, for our good, to be a joyful day, a wonderful day. And so many of us who keep the Sabbath, we keep it not because we have to, we keep it because it's so wonderful. And to have a day when we just stop doing everything else and can focus on more Bible study, focus on taking a nap, focus on doing things with the kids, doing something special, focused on God, of course, and His Word, studying it more than other days, perhaps. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, was it given just to Israel? No, I'm saying it was given to Adam and Eve, therefore to all mankind. And if you're wondering about Gentiles, remember that Gentiles who lived in Israel had to live by the same rules. Lots of verses that there shall be one law for you and the you and the Gentiles within you, you and the foreigners. Isaiah 56, you might want to write that down, verses 6 and 7. God blesses the Gentiles who kept the Sabbath. And he promised to bless them and make them a member, a part of the church, where he says that, and you shall come to my house, a house of prayer for all nations, quoted by Jesus later on. A house of prayer for all nations. It's not just for Jews, folks, okay? And all the mixed multitude that went out with Israel out of Egypt, they had to keep Sabbath too. In fact, I think if I remember correctly, I could be wrong on this, but uh, I think it's in Numbers where a man was found collecting sticks, perhaps for firewood away. He had it prepared for the Sabbath. And they asked God, what should we do with him? And God said, he, have to, he has to be killed. He's broken my Sabbath day. I believe he was part Gentile and part Israelite, if I can remember that. I'll try to put that in my notes. Anyway, let's break down now the words in the fourth commandments. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Kadosh, holy. Remember. Don't let it sneak up on you. Don't forget it. I set alarms on my watch three or four hours before sundown begins. Just, I know sundown's coming, but I, I, I want to have that alarm again. Am I really ready? Am I, am I really ready for Sabbath coming up? Friday night. I don't want to be doing last-minute business. I don't want to be doing, and I've caught myself doing last-minute stuff. Uh, you know, I'm human like the rest of you. Last-minute vacuuming or cleaning or driving home from business or whatever, or doing anything forbidden on the Sabbath. Set it apart. Be ready for Sabbath by keeping it holy. It's a special day. The word keep. So remember, okay? The word keep means, in, in the Holman Bible, it says dedicate it to God as holy. Complete Jewish Bible. Remember the Sabbath, the day Shabbat, to set it apart for God. I love that. Remember the Shabbat, to set it apart for God. The NIV, New Living Translation, and many, many other translations. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Okay? So it's kadosh, holy, meaning to be set apart, to dedicate, to consecrate. We're to consciously set apart Saturday, Sabbath, as a very special day. It's a holy day. It's not to be like other days of the week. It's to be noticeably different. When our kids come to Sabbath, they notice it's different. So get the children involved in getting ready for Sabbath, that's for sure. Help. Get them involved with cleaning up their room, making their beds, and, and tidying up things, and helping out with the food and all that, and just any way they can. And then also with the kids, and we'll talk much more about this next time, I, I, I have videos about creation, and how beautiful creation is, the wonders of creation, and they, I, you know, they'll watch that for a little bit of time on Friday night or Sabbath. So we like to also have, as we come to Sabbath day, 
uh, Sabbath type music, not just music that you'd have every other day of the week. Set it apart as a unique day. So on the Sabbath, as we get ready for Sabbath, leading up to Sabbath, the last couple hours, I play beautiful hymns before the Sabbath about our Savior, about Scripture, about the cross, about salvation. Yeah, the cross. Remember, Paul said he would be content to spend all his time, all his days, talking about solely Jesus and his cross. 1 Corinthians 1.17, that's what he says. 1 Corinthians 1.17. Can you and I say that we've been, or have we instead been, we, can we say what Paul said, that we'd be happy just talking about Jesus and the cross? Paul said that many times. In fact, I have a couple sermons on the cross because some of us were indoctrinated and so indoctrinated against the cross that we never say the word cross. We always said stake, S-T-A-K-E, stake, a pole in the ground. And yet it was the cross on which our Savior poured out his blood that cleanses you and me, that paid the debt that was written against us. The debt written against us was our sins. We're our sins. And that's what was paid for on the cross. That's what he nullified on the cross, the sin debt that we had. Colossians 2.14 explains that. It's not saying you get away with the law. That's crazy. It would be We've been persuaded as such a pagan symbol. Why, why talk about it? The last letter of the Hebrew alphabet in the original Paleo-Hebrew was the shape of a T or a cross. It was called Tav. Aleph to Tav. A to Z. Alpha and Omega in the Greek. I mean, go back and listen to my sermons on the cross if you have a problem with that. 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus and him, Jesus Christ and him crucified. I just determined not to know anything among you except Jesus and him crucified. So he talked about Jesus, 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 Jesus a lot. Galatians 6.14, God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So anyway, we play quiet background music, special sacred songs from hymns and special Sabbath music. Uh, that type of music, uh, not, the, not the type of music we listen to all the other days. Uh, so we don't play a lot of pop and rock. and We don't. But something that praises God, the Hallelujah Chorus, the Handel's Messiah, stuff like that. Your children and grandchildren will understand and experience and grow up in that. We certainly play no loud music. Anyway, keep Sabbath not just because we're told to, but it's a total joy, okay? Remember our Creator to rest, take a nap, spend time with the kids, uh, do some good things, go visit a nursing home. I used to sometimes go play in a nursing home. Now I need to get my background music playing again going. Uh, do something good on the Sabbath. Now the concept of preparation day, I'll maybe talk about that more because I'm going be getting behind here. The only place it's used is in Mark 15 verse 42 and John 19 three times in John 19, where it's called the day before uh, the Sabbath was the high day that year, it says. It was a holy day. It wasn't the weekly Sabbath. But the day before that, the Jews, in John 19, 42, it says it was the, pre it was the Jews' preparation day. Let's, let's, let's load that up there. So they, there they laid Jesus. It's on the screen. Because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby, John 19, 42. So even though that wasn't before the Sabbath, the idea was the day before a holy day, they called a preparation day. The concept is a very good one, but it's not to be overdone. By overdone, I've actually read an article where some minister preaches that it's almost as important as the, as the Sabbath itself. That's nonsense. It's not one of the Ten Commandments. Don't get me wrong. The Sabbath should not catch us unprepared. We should be ready. We should be prepared. And not just all packed into the one day before, so we're dead tired before Sabbath even starts, but spread that out during the week. Be prepared for Sabbath. So I used to go fill up my car and all that on Fridays, but 
you could do that on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or whatever, just to make sure you have enough gas to get the services or whatever. Israel is told to gather twice as much manna the day before the Sabbath to be prepared. So the concept is okay, but not necessarily all packed into one day. Spread it out. So we do our laundry on Sunday or other days. I do check to see that I've got a shirt pressed and ironed and ready and clean and so forth for Sabbath. We do that Friday. Uh, lawn mowing day, shopping day, we normally don't do those on Friday. To me, that's just packing in too much. I don't want to be too tired by the time Sabbath starts. But by the time sundown Friday night comes, you should be ready to enjoy it. Relax, beautiful music, ready for a special dinner. My wife always makes, always makes a beautiful uh, Sabbath Eve, Friday night dinner. Don't be working so hard till the last minute, driving your tractor in the yard or your farm or driving home from business or work or, or finishing up proposals for business. Uh, and, and then finally you look at your watch. Oh no, Sabbath starts officially in one more minute. And that's why the Jews actually welcome in the Sabbath, I think about half an hour before, before uh, the sunset actually is. Uh, to be sure they're not doing this last minute stuff. You don't have to do it half hour before, but I'm just saying it's a good idea. Be ready, be prepared. The concept is good, but some even teach that prep day is as important as the Sabbath. I think that's nonsense. Jesus assailed traditions, remember. Keep it holy, set apart for holy use. Keep, in Hebrew, keep the Sabbath day. Remember to keep the Sabbath day. We put our sheep into a keep, or they used to. I don't have sheep, but you put your sheep into a keep. And it means a place where they're guarded and are safe. Adam was placed in the garden to keep it. Genesis 2.15, and part of the meaning of that, and some translations even say, like the Holman and the Christian Standard Bible say, to watch over it, to guard it. God put it there to cultivate it, but to also watch over it and to guard it. So Adam, when serpent came around, Adam should have stood up, gone to him and said, I don't know who you are, but you are, get out. Get out of our paradise. We're not listening to you. Eve, get away from her, from that serpent. Get away from that serpent. Him, I mean. Keep, guard, protect. So keep the Sabbath from getting profaned, from getting broken. That's what he's saying here. So let's move on now. Exodus 20, verses 9 and 10, continuing the fourth commandment. Six days you shall labor. I am one who believes that he's saying six days is when you do all your work and you should be busy. You shouldn't just be sitting on the couch uh, watching all your emails and texts and Facebook and all of that. Or just playing golf all the time. Six days you shall labor. To me, that's part of the fourth commandment. It's part of the fourth commandment. You shall... Six days you shall work and do all your work. That's when you get your work done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, your daughter, nor your servants, your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger within your gates. So it's not the Sabbath of the Jews. It's God's Sabbath, and it's our Sabbath date. And there are two commands there. One is to be working for six days and stopping, resting on the Sabbath. The Hebrew word for work here primarily means work, occupation, your business, making something, or human labor, or craftsmanship. Okay, the word work is used that way in the Old Testament. Occupation, your business, making something, human labor, or craftsmanship. God is not using the scientific definition of work here in that if you ever, uh, whenever work is being done, energy is being created or transferred. Energy is being transferred. Uh, that's too technical of a description of work. And, and, and Jesus came, Yeshua came and said, you guys are making the Sabbath a burden. It's all right to do good on the Sabbath. It's all right to take your animals out and give them water. It's all right to heal someone on the Sabbath day and release them from this bondage they've been in. Come on. So 
The scientific definition of work is not the meaning here. Nowhere in scripture says you can't tie your shoelaces. That's one of the definitions the Jews use in the Talmud. Do no work primarily means activities related to your business, your occupation, or anything you do with human labor to provide for yourself. We don't have our businesses open on Sabbath. Even if you have other people working there, and you're not. Neither you nor your servants are to be working. We don't order employees to keep working while we take the day off. That's not keeping the Sabbath. Nope, that's not. You can't have someone else working your farm while you take the day off. Nope, nobody, nope, 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 no. Neither you nor your servants nor your animals. In the Philippines, they used to have these calaces. It was a uh, horse drawn buggy. And we used to love to ride them. But if that person was a Sabbath keeper, he would have his horse resting on the Sabbath day. If someone used a cow to plow, or some kind of animal to plow, oxen, that animal would be resting on the Sabbath day. Okay? And next time I'll talk about what about jobs of doing good on the Sabbath? Police, nurse, fireman. We'll cover that next time. God wants you to rest and remember him, though. Jesus later showed that he who created the animals did not mean to be ridiculous. Okay? Did not mean to be ridiculous. Let's finish the wording in the fourth commandment, verse 11. Remember it, keep it holy, make it a set-apart day, a special day. Work six days, rest on the seventh, and not rest one in seven. No, no, no. Rest on the seventh, on the seventh day. Exodus 20, verse 11. Those of you who do rest on Sunday, though, if you really do rest on Sunday, you're not, you're not out there mowing lawns or going bowling and doing your own pleasures, Isaiah 58 stuff and all that, it's better than not having a day of rest, I guess, but it's not keeping the commandment. Exodus 20, verse 11, 4 and 6 days, Jehovah made the heavens and earth, the sea, and all that's in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, defined as the seventh, and hallowed it, made it holy. He did not bless Sunday, he did not bless Friday, he did not bless Monday or Tuesday or any other day. Now let's go to Leviticus 23. I want us to focus on the phrase, holy convocation. Leviticus 23, 1 to 3. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feast of Jehovah, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. New, New King James. These are my feasts. He didn't even say these are your feasts. These are the Jews' feasts. These are my feasts. And he starts with these feasts. The word there is moed or moedim, the plural meaning divine appointment, a date with God. Don't miss that date. Don't be a no-show. Don't stand him up. Don't get the date wrong. Friday and Sunday and any other day is getting the date wrong. Six day. I will say this. If you're a pastor and you have to be at services, giving sermons and leading and preparing sermons and all that. Then in your case, and I'll cover this next time too, the, there are scriptures that show that the Levites were allowed to do certain work related to their work so they can bless all of Israel. So in those cases, I would say pastors and others should still have the principle of a day of rest some other time during the week. But for the rest of us, Sabbath is that day of rest seventh day. These are my feast. Six days shall work be done, but the, verse 3, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. Convocation just means assembly, getting together. The New Century Version says it shall be a day for a holy meeting. The New English Translation, it shall be a holy assembly. The Good News Translation, on that day do not work, but gather for worship. So yes, we are to worship, but don't forget the primary meaning is rest. We, are, we worship every day, and we are to worship specially on the Sabbath. 
but don't forget to rest and stop and have time to rest and stop. Also, please dress respectfully. When you come before your date, when you come before your maker who has told you he wants you there on that date, we come with clean clothes. I don't know that you have to wear a white shirt and necktie like I'm wearing right now, but come clean. In Exodus 19, God had them washing for three days before he gave them the commandments. In Exodus 20, don't come dressed in a way that's sexually enticing, really short skirts, tight skirts. Women, please don't. I'm going to give a blog or maybe even a sermon about stumbling blocks we put down in front of people. Let's, let's not do that. So let's finish here with Isaiah 58. We'll explore this in much more detail next time. Uh, some people talk about how Jesus reformed Sabbath. I don't know where they're getting that from. Jesus reformed Sabbath. When Jesus came as a man 2,000 years ago, he never broke God's law. He never broke the Sabbath. He was accused of breaking the Sabbath. What he broke was their tradition by telling a man to pick up his mat. That was work, supposedly. Jesus said, you guys are being ridiculous. I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. I know what I meant. And you know what? I'm going to, let's just read Isaiah 58, and I'm going to cut it off at that point. I don't want to take this too much longer. We'll cover more of this next time. Go three sermons if we have to. Isaiah 58, verses 1, 13 to 14, New King James. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, but call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of Jehovah honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own stuff, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in Jehovah, and so on. I'm going to read International Standard Version. If you keep your feet from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, this will be introduction for next time. If you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own ways and seeking your own pleasure or speaking your own um, idle words, okay, etc. So next time we'll hammer home what all that means. And is the Sabbath to be kept by Gentiles? I'll show you that it is. How can you make the Sabbath a delight and not doing your own thing and yet still making it a delight? Can you work in your garden? Can you go to the beach? Can you watch a movie? Can you watch uh, Top Gun 2 or whatever? Can you, can you do that? What positive, wonderful things can you do? Can married couples have sex on the Sabbath? And I'll cover that next time too. I knew that would bring some of you apart too, see? What is the answer to that? Maybe that's work for some of you. I don't know. <laughs> can we shop on the Sabbath day or buy and sell on the Sabbath day? Do we, can we conduct business on the Sabbath day? What about emergencies? What do we do about emergencies when we have to do some heavy work some days, sometimes? What if you're a nurse or doctor or firefighter, police officer? How can you make it more enjoyable for your children as well? I hope you find this an enjoyable, important topic. Father in heaven, we bow our heads to you and we just ask in Yeshua's mighty name, in Jesus' name, that you will teach us how important the Sabbath is. Help us to make it a joy and a wonder and to get back to be zealous, zealously keeping Sabbath as your people, dear God. Please pour out your Holy Spirit on us as we keep Sabbath. If they're watching this on Sabbath, please let it be a wonderful day from now on every Sabbath, every seventh day. Those who are keeping Sabbath as they see it on Sunday or Friday or some other day, may you open their minds to the fact that you say very clearly it was the seventh day, and that, Jesus, you kept the seventh day, the same day the Jews did, and we certainly have kept track of time since then, so we know what day it is. Thank you. We love you. Thank you for the wonderful Sabbath. Pour out your Holy Spirit. And smile upon us. In Jesus' wonderful name, thank you. Amen. <music> Visit the Light on the Rock website where you can view additional videos, over 600 sermons and blogs as a scriptural study reference for those who desire to have a closer relationship with God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ and learn more about His incredible plan for all mankind.
We are not a church, but a nonprofit organization providing in depth biblical studies free for all who would like to visit our site. The Light on the Rock Foundation also supports an orphanage in Kenya, providing financial resources to support their living costs and education. We never ask for money. However, any donations are greatly appreciated and will be used to support the Kenyan Orphanage and our site. Thank you for visiting, and if you find the site beneficial to you and your family, please share with others.